I, th I think I find. Do you know what it is? You, you, be, you as you get a bit old, you get a bit more patchy. So you'll have moments where you play great and you think, oh, fantastic. And then there'll be times where you're missing a few shots and the guy pounces on you and you lose momentum. So you know, and, and then they take control of the match. So it's, you know, when you're in your prime, you don't. That, 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 them patchy moments don't it's really happen. Funny, isn't it? So, um, but I think like you look at Jimmy White, he's 14 years old, he's 62 now, and he loves playing. He loves being on the tour. He's still practicing two, three hours a day, yeah. and it keeps him happy. Yeah. And I think, well, as long as you're happy doing it, why, why don't, why stop doing it? You know. So. Radio. Now we've done this interview before. Yeah, we have. <laughs> I know. I, know. I was thinking that. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. So Ronnie O'Sullivan Unbreakable was out in hardback. It's out in paperback as of last Thursday for Christmas, which is great. You've got loads of fans in the building here. Um, let's get up to speed with what's going on with you and Snooker, first yeah. of all. Yeah, no, let's, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying... I'm not enjoying how, I'm up, how I've played, but I'm enjoying just sort of still being in the the game, if you like, in the business, whatever you want to call yeah. it. You know, I like the lifestyle. I enjoy the freedom it gives me. I enjoy not having a boss telling me that I've got to be here, there and everywhere. So I feel fortunate in that way. But actually playing, I'm like disgusted <laughs> with my performance. And I'm like, what has happened to me? Like, why am I so right, terrible? So, so zoom out, right? Yeah, so like, you're, you're your yeah. coach. You're your Steve Peters. Yeah. What ha what do you think might have happened to Ronnie O'Sullivan? I don't know. I just, I, I'm, I, I look at people that have gone before me because I always think, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel here. No one's, you know, like it happens to every sports person, um, even Muhammad Ali. You can't have your, your shelf life as a sportsman. Um, so I, I know that's going to come, but you just think, well, it, it's not going to happen right now, you know, but you feel like, you know, that it's things are, I watch myself play and I think, oh, that's terrible. You Do you know? watch yourself back? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, I'm, I never used to, but I've had to kind of look at it from a from a cold perspective and kind right. of like, let's see what's going on here. And there's been times where I thought I played good in that match and I watch it and I thought it was terrible. Interesting. You know, so your feelings and actual reality is different. So you kind of have to accept it, I suppose. So you talk, I mean, I've been all morning because you come in, I've been talking about you and you talk about it in the book, which is so interesting because we're straight in on this this topic. Mm. You know, you can be you can be a flair player and a flair human being, which is great until other people figure out mm. how to out technical your flair. Mm. And then you've either got to bow out gracefully, become mm. a, some kind of rock star star sports person mm. or get technical yourself and you mm. did that didn't you mm. so you know how to get technical yeah no I know I've covered every base really you know I've, as a sportsman you think you know Ray, Ray Reardon said to me once he said we want to make you impregnable and I was like what does that mean he said well you have no weaknesses so I've kind of like adopted that philosophy and just kind of tried, tried to be strong in all departments I think that's why I've kept going so long because you can't just rely on one form of play yeah. sometimes you have to reinvent yourself and I think over years I've, I've done that and it's kind of held me in good stead but you know at some point these youngsters 19 20 they don't care who you are they just see ball pop ball yeah yeah, think, yeah yeah you know and they just come down and, and knock you over you know but, and the further mm. away you get from being king of the hill mm. it's not that they have less respect for you but they they fear you less yeah. and the fear that their fear can help you a lot when you're at your peak yeah exactly you know i won a lot of tournaments where people did miss frame ball <laughs> and you think oh you know and you, you clear up and win the tournament um so you know there was times where it worked for you but nowadays um it doesn't seem to to, to, to matter that much but it's, it's good you know listen i don't you know i just i like playing i still enjoy practicing which is which is a good thing so you know i think if i, if I ever did fall off the tour because i wasn't getting the results i think they'd still invite me back to playing a few tournaments of course so, they would. yeah i think i'll be all right there. yeah and there's so many i always want to ask you so many questions i've thought about uh, 10 in the last minute now um because you talk about your practice we could talk about um you know you deciding when and and to to pull out of a tournament when to enter a tournament because mm. you could there's loads more tournaments between now and christmas but you think yeah. you're probably not going to enter them no yeah well well, I will enter them, and if I feel like the day before I want to go, I'll go. But if I don't fill up for it, then I just say, look, you know, I'm not, I'm not. Right, ready so they'll, for they'll it, give yeah. you a last minute. Yeah, dot com and they'll always get a replacement to come in and take my place. So right, but that, you're pretty sure you're going to go to the Far East. Possibly, yeah, November. When's that? Where's that? Uh, just outside of Shanghai. And so, what will that be? Uh, that'll be a ranking event, which is quite a bigger tournament, and then I'll plan that, and then I'll go to another city in China and play in an Asian PTC event, which is like just for Chinese players, but they've invited me to come along and play, so I'll go and do that as well, and then I'll come back, and then I'll have a week off, then probably go to York because it's UK Championships, and I like York, right? Um, and then off to Macau again at Christmas. That's that's the plan, and um, some exhibition stuff as well on the way. Yeah, more 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 exhibition stuff. Yeah. 
Because I love, I mean, I love your story. I love you. Um, mm. When you started to play exhibition matches, you know, on your own, mm. um, just to say, that, look, if the day job dries up, I've got this going on. Mm. Um, did you did you sort of format a show or a, like, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the players like Dennis Taylor, they're brilliant with gags and they kind of, if they're having a bit of a bad night on the table, they just get through it a few gags. I'm not I'm not one of them funny people, so I have to rely on actually playing half-decent snooker to keep the crowd entertained, right. so yeah. But so. how does it work? How does an exhibition night work then? Well, I mean, a lot of people just come and they just want to see, they just want to see you play. They just, you know, and, and, and a lot of shots you play in exhibition, you wouldn't play in a match, so you relax a bit more, so you all kind of get shots and you find your form. When you're more relaxed, you tend to find your form a lot more. Isn't that and, Oh, so, so annoying, they, isn't it? <laughs> they get, yeah, they get to see a different side, and you know, you interact more with the fans. You meet them, you have a picture and a yeah, sign yeah. autograph. So for the fan, it's a good experience, you know. Yeah, and you went and did that because you you didn't you you didn't want to be the servant to the masters of snooker, did mm. you? You wanted to be your own master. Yeah, no, I like just sort of picking and choose. Yeah, I like I like I like my exhibition sort of style yeah, and yeah. stuff that I do, and I like working with my sponsors in China and Saudi Arabia. So I can't do it all, you know. I can't be away from home 12 months yeah, a year, yeah, yeah. so you have to pick and choose. And all right, so let's go back to what you're talking about before. So mm. so the thing about snooker is compared to one of the things about snooker compared to most other sports, not all sports, is that it looks like unlike football or rugby or boxing, you can carry on playing, you know, into late, much later into life than, than, than you might otherwise, mm. which of course is true. Mm. But it does take a toll. So it takes mm. a toll on your posture, mm. on your back, on, on mm. your physi- physiology, but also mentally, because there's a lot going on there. So mm. you can't just carry on playing until you're 70 and be as good as a, a hot, hungry 25-year-old. Mm. And look at your bite in your finger just mm. thinking about it. Yeah. So... so can you let us inside your head to where you might be on that journey? Um, I think I'm sort of. I, th- I think I find. Do you know what it is? You, you, be, you as you get a bit older, you get a bit more patchy. So you'll have moments where you play great and you think, "Oh, fantastic!" And then there'll be times where you're missing a few shots and the guy pounces on you and you lose momentum. So you know, and, and then they take control of the match. So it's, you know, when you're in your prime, you don't. That, 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 that them patchy moments don't it's really happen. Funny, isn't it? So, um, but I think like you look at Jimmy White, he's 14 years old, he's 62 now, and he loves playing. He loves being on the tour. He's still practicing two, three hours a day, yeah. and it keeps him happy. Yeah. And I think, well, as long as you're happy doing it, why, why don't, why stop doing it? You know. So, I was well, rereading your book and I was listening to some documentaries about mm. you on on there were on there were videos, but I've had them on my headphones. I told you about it when you came in, and mm. I was I was you were. Just listening to you and other legends mm. talking about mm. being mm. at their best and consistency. Mm. Because the thing is, like you say, I'm so glad you said what you just said about it's patchy. Or you could look at it saying, saying it's patchy if you're not, you're not in control. Or it's compartmentalised if you are in control. Mm. And mm. you realise you can be as good as you were, mm. but not for as long. So therefore you pick and choose and mm. get yourself up for certain mm. tournaments. Is mm. that about right? I think for me that would be right. I mean, I'm better off preparing, not being on the road so much. Maybe thinking, OK, I want to do well in the UK Championships. I'll play in one or two tournaments leading up to that. And then I'll probably be in a better place to perform well but yeah. if you're going tournament after tournament I think you just kind of can maybe that won't work for me as I'm a bit older I don't know I mean but it's all good just experimenting with yeah stuff. But, but having the presence of mind and being witness to your own career and your own mm. life is hugely advantageous like so I, I run a festival in the summer yeah uh, and it's so funny mm. because the older bands yeah they won't play in August because they want to be on holiday with their family. Yeah. But when you're in a band when you're younger, it doesn't even come into the thinking. Yeah, yeah, Do you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so interesting. Isn't yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I know. I think I'm just, I just enjoy just being able to do something that I've loved. It's been snooker's been my best friend, yeah, yeah. and I'm, it's really hard to turn your back on it. But you have to kind of find where do I fit into all this now? I can do exhibitions until I'm 60, 65. Yeah. If I still love playing, I'll probably still be doing that. I might go into playing Chinese pool because it's a very popular in China yeah. it's easier it's on a smaller table there's no expectations on me to do well so everything's a bit of a, a, a new a new sport a new buzz um, so there's lots of things I can do but yeah. you know just you've got to be happy at this stage of my it's career fun. You, when do you think you might finish playing stuff? I don't know I don't put a time limit <laughs> on, on it you know um, I just I don't want it to stop so I'm t- just finding ways of keep going but at some point you probably kind of go oh, I don't really want to do this anymore but 
you did mm. and you didn't. You do and you don't find mm. you, snooker for you can be very anxiety inducing mm. to mm. the extent that you just can't walk into a room with any people in it. Mm. So mm. I mean, high level anxiety. Mm. That's one half of your mm. binary black and white brain. Yeah. The other half is you you love it and you and you find it very comfortable yet anxiety inducing and that's the bit i i didn't understand as still you talk until st- you started talking about steve peters mm. and steve because you, you built up all these uh, routines and rituals didn't you mm. um same shirt same yeah. side of the yeah. door or whatever yeah. it was yeah, yeah. and then he came along steve peters this mm. genius sports psychologist and mm. said mm. it's not about anything that's about you mate yeah Mm. And does that suggest that he thought you were losing belief in yourself and putting it down to other things? Yeah, you come like a little bit superstitious in the way you think. If I do this, this, and that, then you know, I'll, I'll play well. And you know, and it, so like even before a match, you know, you think oh, I've got to hit a few balls, and and I've realised since working with Steve that it's just all nonsense. You know, so now I, most of the time I don't even practice before the match right. because you kind of go, well, I've been doing this for so long. You know, it's just like have a bit of faith in yourself. Yeah. It's, it's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. Yeah. So stressing about it, it's probably not going to help the situation. So you just learn to go along with the flow a bit more and back yourself. I think that's important just to be able to back yourself, to be able to perform when the when you need to, you know. And you talk about the Worlds a lot in the book and mm. about the fact that it's just a few days longer than all other tournaments and that's mm. the difference. And getting to the semis is really getting to the starting point when you're at a certain level. Yeah. And that's why you've got to all those semis. Mm. And is it true that you, you'll get into a final thing? I've not got, I've not got this one. I just need to get home now. Um, I, th- I find Sheffield is a long, you know, 17 days is a long time. Um, it's a lot of time to invest in something. And unless if someone said to me, look, you're going to win it before it started, you kind of go, okay, cool. But to go through all them rounds and all them days and, and not win the tournament, that can be a little bit hard uh, to take, really. So uh, it's, but, it's not my favourite tournament. But in, <laughs> in the final, yeah. when you get to the final yeah. and you think, oh, no, this isn't going to happen. You have had that feeling, haven't you? Yeah, I've had that feeling pretty much in all a lot of my career, but I've still managed to win even though I've had them yeah, feelings. Yeah. So, you know, feelings, like Steve said, you know, you've got to ignore your feelings, you've got to switch off, go and do your job. Stick at it. You know, you know, emotions are not, are not a good thing to be dealing with while you're, while you're trying to do your job. So I've learned to, to be able to, you know, do that, you know. Virgin Radio.